All right, good morning, everybody. Welcome to our morning note. My name is Carlos Garcia. I'm the founder and CEO of GAR Capital. Thanks so much for taking time out of your day to join me. Happy Friday. It's October 30th, 2020. Let's go ahead and talk market, shall we? I had some of my notes that I did last night, so I kind of want to go over that with you. All right, so let's go and talk markets here. Dow futures down 236, was down more, a lot more overnight. NASDAQ was down, uh, is down about 106 points, was down a lot more than that overnight. And S&P down 25, uh, about 0.76%, with that being a nice bounce off 32.26. Crude oil is down 0.88%. Bitcoin futures are down 0.74%. Russell 2000 down about 0.75. Gold futures up 1.14. Silver up 2%. Uh, Euro dollar 11697, 24 pips to the upside. Dollar yen is down 17 pips, 104.45. And the VIX, interesting enough, down half a percent at 37.38. And the U.S. dollar is down as well, 0.26% at 93.71. So, looking at what we're looking at, we got some earnings yesterday. So, I did some homework last night. I was working on the valuations and stuff, looking at basically three different companies that reported. And just want to go over that. So, before I get this started, I'm going to go ahead and go over pre-market movers, make life easier. Go ahead and bring this up here. I know you guys have questions. So let's go over some of the earnings that got in today. And we got some price upgrades from Facebook. We had personal income was better than expected, 0.9% against 0.4%. Uh, let's see here, XOM, which is ExxonMobil. Revenue miss, 46.2 billion to 48.49 billion. Adjusted loss to share 18 cents. The estimated loss was 18 cents. Production uh, missed. Sees further reductions to capital cash expenses. It posts their third quarterly straight loss. <clears throat> Amazon price target raised to 4,000 from 3,800 benchmark. <clears throat> At benchmark, they keep the buy rating. Twitter price upgraded from Deutsche Banks from 56 to 64. And NYSC announces decision to suspend and remove Hertz Global Hertz Holdings, HTZ, from the exchange. All right, let's see what's moving and shaking. So Apple down 3.68% pre-market, NIO down 2% pre-market, Twitter's down 14% pre-market. Uh, let's see here, what else is moving that's big? Uh, Dow Jones, mover, uh, Microsoft down about 8.89%, uh, Boeing down 0.93%, Chevron's up after earnings 0.23%. Uh, let's see what else is moving here. Uh, Under Armour up 8.63% 8, 8 after earnings. Uh, there's a Class A and a Class C. They're both up. Monster Beverage down 1.35%. American Airlines 1.16%. AMD down 1%. So tech is getting the big hit. JD's down 0.65%. Facebook really after earnings basically flat 0.30%. Alphabet, which is the parent company of Google, is up 8.27%. And Tesla's down about 1% right now. Okay, so... What I want to do here is go over a couple things before we get started. I, this is kind of a preview from our uh, uh, investment club. So I cut up a couple of buy ratings and I was doing some, some numbers here. I did three of them. I did Facebook, Amazon, and Apple. So just hear me out. With Facebook, they broke 10 million subscribers. The revenue is up 22%. The PE ratio is 36 times, which is not that bad. Income and revenue, new highs. This reported this quarter, 42% EPS growth, 42% revenue growth. I did a deep. I did a little bit of a deep, uh, deeper dive into their numbers. They have four hundred and seventy-two million dollars in debt, but fifty-eight billion dollars in cash. That's free cash that they have. Uh, Thirty-one percent margin and twenty percent revenue growth. That's better than Google, mind you. And looking at their information here on Facebook, and I'm looking at the numbers. I think Facebook is a buy here. I think Facebook is absolutely undervalued in a sense. They're a cash cow. I would actually make this prediction as well. They'll probably be the first or the next of the FANG. Uh, I don't know if you want to count Microsoft in that group or Apple. So let's just say FANG is Google, Netflix, Amazon, and Facebook for argument's sake. They should be the first one to offer a dividend. If not, do more stock buybacks. Google does, spot, stock, does some stock buybacks, but Facebook would be the next one to do it. And I think there's a lot more potential growth for Facebook. So Facebook either has the cash ready for an acquisition or some capital repurchasing or something because they just have too much of it. 
And I like where Facebook is headed. I think they are growing and I think they're actually pretty cheap. So Facebook should be an ad. I do own it. If I'm looking for a position to buy in, uh, right now isn't one. I'd actually wait for a little bit more of a pullback. I think maybe around 260, you pull the trigger on a, on a Facebook. So 260, again, you can get some election uh, volatility to help your position out. 260, again, $20 difference here would be a good chance to buy. Again, I already own it. Uh, so to initiate a position here would be smart, but again, to add, I think 260. Next was Amazon, and I did some numbers on Amazon. 71, 71 billion in cash, 49, bill, 49 billion in debt, 258 billion in assets, 184 billion in liabilities. Mar so it's kind of funny when you look at Amazon. Amazon, you can look at one or two ways. Either they're a retailer or a tech company. If you're looking at a tech company, yeah, they're growing, but again, not as much as their other peers, like an Etsy or a Wayfair. Fine, fair enough. But if you're looking at them as a retailer, they're destroying everything and everybody in their place. Their margins are double, are, are, are about 40% larger than Walmart. Their revenue growth is 28%. That's for a retailer. That is very difficult to achieve. So again, the dependent of where you see the prism of an Amazon, whether it's a tech company, just AWS, and that's how you're looking at it, then okay, I can see Amazon's justification for valuation, but their retail side is really the growth side. What I do like is that they are spending money on expansion. You know, obviously distribution centers, they're growing with drones. I like that. Uh, COVID hit up about $4 billion on their bottom line. Uh, so that's pretty much understandable with workers and what have you. Amazon has a lot of workers that they added. I think they added like 40,000 jobs or 4,000 jobs this year, something like that. I had to look. I, I read that headline number. I want to say they added 40,000 jobs, I think, in the last two years. So Amazon is obviously spending money. Uh, their minimum their minimum uh, minimum wage is now fifteen dollars. They actually announced it on the conference call that they were proud of Best Buy and Target for raising the minimum wage following their direction. So Amazon is starting to become, in a sense, their own city in a way of, of kind of running shows. So looking at Amazon, Amazon I do like and I own it. But from valuation standpoint, I think the retail sales or the retail area. It's right around 400 to 500 billion, maybe, uh, in, in regards to valuation. That's a little much. Again, you're expecting a big expansion. But AWS and really the tech side is really where the meat is. And AWS is still growing, which is the cloud side. Um, if you broke up the company or you kind of looked at separate parts, their valuation now is 1.7 trillion. That's actually pretty fair. I actually think that's a fair valuation, maybe one and a half trillion. So, with that being said, I would say price target on Amazon if you wanted to buy was 2865 to 2900. That was my calculation here. So if you own it, you you hold it. But again, I think 2900 to 2865 on Amazon, if you're looking at it here, uh, let's go ahead and bring up a daily. Uh, right at this break point where this double, this bottom here was tested, the 100 day, that would be a good place to add some more. But here, I think you're fine. You hold it here. And uh, that again, the number, I think the numbers are justified. I think Facebook is undervalued. Now, Apple's a different story. Apple, again, I like the numbers, but it got, obviously, you know, you had their Apple iPhones sales come out. EPS, this is the numbers that's kind of, again, I, I, Apple's my largest position. EPS sideways since 2018. Revenue is 7%. They have a 273 percent, 273 billion in revenue. EPS is 13%. They're, they have 93 billion in cash, according to the, the details on TD Ameritrade, but yet $94 billion in debt. The best thing that they have here is their margins, 21% margins. Obviously, you know, I talked about Facebook, I'm 31%. They have also $100 billion in investments. So it's probably their capital allocation that they own. So they still have a great cash position. My question is, what are they going to do with it? So again, they're investing into different areas. They have this thing called the bar now, which is kind of like a Peloton killer, where they're just going to track everything through your phone and tailor workouts to you. So again, you can see that they're kind of pushing... Uh, services and services has grown more than everything else has grown more than Mac and uh, phones and everything else so I like the pivot to services I like the pivot that they're trying to combine services I think they have the Apple one services bundle uh, report uh, offered today the iPhone 5g one the new one the 12 has just been released so it's not gonna hit this quarter but it is in time for the holiday season so as an Apple shareholder I'm really gonna give it to 2021 I want to see Better revenue growth than 7% for the premium that I'm paying on Apple if I'm adding here. So I'm not adding here to this level, just a heads up. And again, I do love some Apple. Again, I'm an Apple fan, but again, valuations do matter sometimes. And what you're paying for is a premium for a great company. But how great? 
Again, 2018, two years now, EPS is sideways. I don't like that. 2017, 2016 were amazing, but they've tapered off. Again, it could be just kind of cannibalization of their same market. They are still number one in smartphones, but how much can that segment grow is the key. The 5G is a really big one. So if my, my deal when I was talking to my team was, I think you combine Apple and Qualcomm if you're really looking at 5G. The elections, forget that for now. Apple and five, if you're looking at 5G as a whole, you can look at Marvell, you can look at Qualcomm, and you can look at Apple as kind of a combined trade, and you're looking long term. But again, I need Apple to show me more. 7% revenue growth in the sideways EPS is not making me happy as a shareholder. So I'm looking at if I wanted to buy, again, it's a hold here. I'm not saying to sell it. I don't think it's a sell. But again, I would hold for 100 to $104 price target to buy. Uh, I do need better numbers on EPS to justify this valuation. If 2021 does not justify this valuation, and I don't see at least above 10 uh, 10% EPS growth, at least nine or eight, seven percent, you got to give me something more than the past two years. Show me some EPS growth somehow, then I would take profits on Apple, not sell everything, but start taking some money and kind of start moving around a little bit into higher growing areas. And I think Facebook is a really great candidate reading that reading the conference call doing the numbers facebook is a winner guys i mean their numbers are ridiculous they really are sorry if i went too much on the tangent there i just wanted to go over the big really big cap uh, tech cap big mega cap tech companies and kind of give the valuation of how i was doing some homework last night on it and i wanted the investment club to know it's kind of a little bit of a preview i apologize for being too much on there all right good morning good morning uh, spy levels for today. Let's go and take a look here. Let's do the Q&A since everyone loves that. I'm going to expand this chart here. Uh, try, let's see the levels today. Uh, you do need to break this level here around 332, but again, downside 323. If it breaks those lows, it can get ugly. This is this is the fourth straight presidential, Octo presidential election October that the market has been read. Uh, do you think Apple will fall, fall below 100 soon? Uh, below 100? No, I don't think so. Again, I already talked about my price target on that. IWM needs to break. Again, it's kind of holding this fib here. So I would say around 153 would be a good number to kind of go short here if we get a little lower. But again, guys, keep in mind, next week is the election. So you need to be extremely careful for volatility. Uh, sell Twitter, 33 close right the open with poor earnings reports. Uh, I don't have any of the 52s. All I have was one runner of the 55s. The 52s, we closed out with students and we made our money. Uh, but yeah, get, get out of those. What to do with the Facebook 300 call? We have to see how we open up. But yeah, you're going to have to salvage that bad boy. More market pullback today. Actually, I'm seeing a slight bounce across the board. But again, you could be treading water for the day. Is Etsy sell-off index related? Uh, would you play options-wise before the end of 21? Let's see. Yeah, Etsy just fell $2 uh, share after hours. Market related. I mean, Facebook, I mean, eBay, if you want to take a look at some of their names that are competitors, they're all, well, eBay's pretty much down, uh, pretty much flat, but they had their earnings and they fell too. So Etsy's kind of moving in that sense. Do you invest for the long term or just do options? I do both. Uh, 5G stock, do you like long terms? Qualcomm or Skyworks? I think Qualcomm. Qualcomm would be the boom. Uh, Google to add shares. I don't own Google. But if you're looking at Google, I would say 1586 seems about to be a level. If you wanted to add here on this breakout, that's actually not a bad idea. They had a really knockout quarter. Do you see tech stocks that are bounced today? Um, I don't. I think now, whatever ends today, that's it. Monday's going to be extremely quiet because you have the elections on Tuesday. So I think this is basically it for the day, for the week. CRM filled to the downside. Sell Facebook and Amazon, Twitter, November 20 calls. Uh, November, I don't know your strike. Why is TS management so bad? The Sony deal sucks. Who's TS? <laughs> Good time to shop for some Twitter today. Twitter, I haven't deep dug the numbers. I didn't get a chance to. I mean, three, I did those three co companies and it took a little bit. So it took most of my night. So looking at Twitter here, you're right at 43.95. I would wait for the election on Twitter. If Donald Trump rewins the election, I would go long Twitter. Absolutely. If I don't have Facebook as a physician, do I initiate a current price? Yeah, I would get into this price. Absolutely. Um, do you think Google will be a play today calls? Google is absolutely too expensive to trade it. You skip it. 52 Twitter, 285, Amazon, 3260. Yeah, I uh, okay, so you have the 52 Twitters 
and this is for November. Actually, you could get a bounce. You may want to hold that. Oh, AT&T management bad. Yeah, Paul, with AT&T, they just took in way too much debt. And the only thing holding them up is their yield for the most part. But they took in a lot of debt. Them and General Electric were really the big ones that just got drunk off debt. Uh, debt. Uh, key level for Facebook is right at 200 here, which is right around 274. I mean, really, it's only down $2 after earnings, after it's soared. Apple's puts bonus levels, please. Uh, guys, if I were you guys, I would not be doing anything before the election. You wait it out. I know you guys want to do stuff today. Don't. Don't, don't, don't. You don't know what the hell is going to happen. If you get into anything today, you better be closed by, by today, in my opinion. You don't want to do anything ahead of the ahead of the election because it could get ugly fast. Just so you know, pins twenty two near ninety. Still figuring it out. Why? Uh, looking at Apple, uh, if you're looking for a break, the upside is around one twelve thirty two. Or we'll break that support, which is not your resistance. But again, if you break below one hundred five fifty nine, then you'll be watching that one hundred to one hundred six level to buy. Uh, next one is I have Apple six twenty twenty calls. I don't know what strike you have. Pins. I actually like pins, to be honest with you. I think we get a bounce here. Um, so again, again, it's kind of going to follow the same analog as Snap, and I think it does bounce above and gets around back to 65. Thoughts on VNMA after disappointing earnings? I own V, and I think long-term you own it right here. Absolutely, you own it. And it did break the 200-day, so I may just add a position on Visa. Visa is a winner. Again, it's just consumer spending is down. But I think it's a really good trade on Visa. You own that thing. MasterCard, same thing. But again, I already own Visa, so I have a little more to a Visa side. Been waiting for NVIDIA to drop below 500. Been holding up as well, in your opinion? Yes, absolutely. 500 on NVIDIA, you buy. Absolutely. I was actually doing some numbers on ATVI, which is Activision Blizzard. And I was literally about to play, set a position to play the bounce, to buy it, and it bounced anyways. ATVI is a good, is a very good stock. I own it in Eastbo, which is an ETF. Uh, good price to buy in Qs. Okay, guys, I'm gonna kind of end it up, wrap it up here for a second. I know I talked about a bunch. To buy Qs, I would say 270.49 is that support. Are we selling Facebook, Apple TD calls at the open? TD. Uh, Discord holdings. Yeah, we should. You should be able to salvage again. Wait a couple of minutes and see how it moves in the market. All right, guys, we'll leave it there. Have a great rest of your day. Enjoy your week. Weekend, excuse me. I'll catch you guys for the morning note. We're literally just Saturday, Sunday, Monday, four days away from the election, guys. Things are coming. Big things are coming in regards to volatility. So let's go ahead and crush it. Have a great rest of your weekend, guys. I'll catch you guys soon.